Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you the best way to level up and fame farm as a solo player, killing the open world mobs in a specific build so that you can kill them very, very fast. But real quickly before we get into that, check out the description, there's some links in there, some to help me out in my Patreon or joining the channel to sort of help me out in making videos by giving me some extra income every month, and then also there's a link to my Discord where there's some constant giveaways that always go on courtesy of SBI, so make sure you check all that stuff out by far following the links in the description. Okay, so first and foremost, looking at our build, the weapon that we're going to be using are the Spiked Gauntlets, a fairly new weapon in the Warcloth weapon line, and along with that we're going to be using a Cultist Robe, Assassin Shoes, Guardian Helmet, Fetford Cape, Beef Stews or Omelets, and then Poison Potions or Invisibility Potions. For abilities, first on your spiked gauntlets, it's Dragon Leap on the Q, Triple Kick on the W, and Aggressive Burst for your passive. For abilities on your armor, it's the Emergency Shield on your helmet, Levitate on your Cultist Robe, and then usually Refreshing Sprint for your boots, although you can also switch to Swift Cut for bosses as it can help out sometimes. And for passives on your armor, starting with the shoes, it's either Balanced Mind or Quick Thinker, Aggression on the chest piece, and Toughness on the helmet. For the food and potions, deciding which two to use, invis potions are for if you want a little bit more survivability and escapability if you get ganked, and then poison potions are just something that can help with bosses. You can bring them both along and just swap to poisons for bosses as well, which is what I would suggest. For which food to bring along, we'll cover that when we get into playstyle, so make sure you check that out. One other thing that's sort of important to mention for builds here is actually your mount. As you're dismounting, killing mobs, mounting back up, moving to the next ones constantly in this, you dismount, mount up, and walk to the next one like hundreds and hundreds of times an hour. So certain mounts are a little bit better than other ones. So two types of mounts do very well. First, ones with a low time to gallop, such as stags and mooses, can be really helpful for helping you get from your one mob group to the next mob group as you get that gallop up a little bit faster. And then also ones that take a little bit less time to mount up, which is pretty much only the gray wolves. Using one of these types of mounts should speed up your ability to clear mobs quickly, so I would suggest using one of them. Now, the armor isn't super important for this build, really a lot of it just comes down to the spiked gauntlets abilities, and you're going to dismount and kill the mobs within 5 seconds before you get all of your abilities off cooldown anyways, so really you can run other things for those armor pieces if you want, because the majority of the heavy lifting is done purely by your weapon abilities. For example, since your boots you're normally going to just be using refreshing sprint, you can either switch them for any other leather shoes and still get refreshing sprint, or you can switch them for something that has more escapability like soldier boots or demon boots or something like that if you want a little bit more survivability. For your chest piece, really the reason that you use the cultist robe is because it has a base 50% damage boost. However, the mage robe and the robe of purity also have a 50% damage boost. They're just a little bit less good against the bosses. So you can switch to one of those if you want. It'll be just as effective. Or you can really switch to any other cloth robe that you want to level up. And it'll only be slightly worse as the worst one is only 40% damage boost, which is still just a 10% damage difference, which is not a huge deal. Lastly, for your helmet, Guardian Helmet is not the fastest this helmet you can run it really any cloth helmet to get that damage passive would technically be faster than the guardian helmet the reason that i would highly suggest running the guardian helmet for your helmet slot though is because it can cleanse off bleeds which a lot of the mobs bleed you which do things like prevent you from mounting up which can be deadly in some situations so i would highly suggest running the guardian helmet for that and it also has the added benefit of if you pop your guardian helmet and have a shield on you and then go to mount up and a mob hits you while you're mounting up it won't cancel that mount up because it would hit the shield and not you so it's just a really really solid defensive option for purging off bleeds and helping you mount up in the open world really securing your safety way more than any other helmet slot would lastly some people find thetford cape annoying because it procs and chain lightnings to a bunch of different mobs that you might not have wanted to pull all at once so if you find that annoying you can also swap to demon cape and it's just a little bit worse damage over time Okay, moving on to playstyle now. Basically, the playstyle for this fame farming is all about rotating between your E ability and your Q and W together on different groups of mobs. So you come up to one group of mobs, one shot them all with your E, mount up, go to the next group, and kill them with your Q and W, and then by the time you get to the next group, hopefully your E is back off of cooldown. Really, the reason that this is so fast is because once you get your world level leveled up a little bit, your E will be able to one-shot the most mobs pretty easily. Any ones that aren't glowing or boss mobs 
bombs will pretty much get one shot by the E, which makes it very, very fast. You just dismount, press E, and then mount right back up, and you're done, like, instantly. Because of this, I would suggest not going for the very low-leveled mobs, so the ones that are the least leveled, the really small ones, don't bother going for those because that will just eat your E cooldown and won't really be worth it. Go for the ones that are leveled up once, those are ideal, or any higher than that as well. Now, since most of the clearing speed comes from dismounting, popping your E, one-shotting the mobs, and then mounting back up, you want to choose the food that you're using based on how well you're doing that. So if you're finding that in the, say, tier 6 zone that you want to farm, you're dismounting on the leveled up once mobs, hitting their E, and they're surviving with just like a little bit of health, it's better for you to pop a stew to get that little bit of bonus damage and be able to one-shot them so that you can kill them in one shot as that's much more efficient. However, if you're one-shotting them no problem without food or just, just one-shotting them with no food, then it's more efficient to get the extra cooldowns from the omelets so that you can do it more often. When you have your E on cooldown using your Q and Ws, one thing that is important to note with your W is that if you use it at max range, not all of the kicks will hit the mobs in front of you, so you really want to use it really just shortly in front of you to make sure you get all three kicks on the same mobs. With your Q, you'll notice that it has two charges essentially, so one that hits them, and then if you hit an enemy with that, you get the next one that can knock them up. It's most efficient damage-wise not to use the knock-up punch unless that knock-up punch will kill the mob. So use the one, wait for it to reset, and then use it again, and just never use the actual knock-up finish unless that's actually going to finish killing the mob and put it on cooldown. Another thing that can help speed this up a little bit is if you're doing groups of mobs, like let's say there is a melee mob and a ranged mob that are standing a little bit far away from each other, and you don't have your E up that has that nice big AoE, you kind of want to pull them together before you start clearing it so you're not having to clear one and then the other one. For this, I usually just walk into the melee mob with my mount and then walk towards the ranged one and dismount on the ranged one so the melee one comes and follows you onto the ranged mob, which makes it much easier to kill them as they're grouped up together. Finally, for playstyle, looking at the bosses that are in the open world, always go for the bosses because they are the best fame. However, this build isn't the greatest at killing them, I will admit. It's much more specialized in killing the sort of only leveled up once once, but it is still decent. If you're having trouble killing the bosses, let's say you're a little bit low IP, one thing that you can do is swap your Q to cross step, as that is technically the highest DPS Q, which can sort of help you out a little bit. Another thing that can help out is the reason that I like using assassin shoes is because of that swift cut ability that can also be helpful on bosses as it gives you a little bit more damage and it can also help dodge abilities with that little jump behind them. One other thing to look at is zones as in the open world it is a pretty dangerous activity in some zones if there's high activity and a lot of gankers it can be pretty dangerous so you want to make sure you're choosing the right zones. So first and foremost, red zone is probably safer than black zone just in general, however you will get less fame from doing it in the red zone as it just has less fame rewards when killing either the same mobs. So I would suggest doing in this in the black zone if you want to level up the fastest. Now a common mistake that new players make when they go out to farm the open world is that they go through the portal zones or they go from one of the towns in the rest and they just go to one zone right outside of it and start farming there. Zones right outside of the portal zones and right outside of the rest towns will have the most traffic, they'll have the most gankers, they'll have the most people that will dismount and try to kill you. So really, it's actually better to go further away, at least two or three zones away from the portal zones or away from the rest towns and then start farming out there because they will have less people just roaming around and looking to kill you as you're killing mobs. Yes, there is a little bit more chance that you'll get ganked on your way to and from the spot that you're farming, but compared to the chance that getting ganked while you're farming, it's definitely worth it. And never, never farm in the portal zones. Do not go into the portal zones and start killing mobs there. That is by far the most dangerous zone out there. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful in getting your gear informed up really fast. Make sure you do the things, and I will see you next time. Right in the <laughs>